to say it myself, I feel like the four teams we got in the playoffs were probably the four I would have expected from the start, uh, with the shape the teams were in and with the, with the mode and everything, the way it was going. There was definitely a chance for an upset or two. Uh, Rock's Kiss weren't that far from making it to the top four, but at the end of the day, it was Navi Sig. Today's the first semi-final. Na'Vi got first place in the round robin, so they got to choose their opponent, and they decided to play up against Sigma, who were in third place. Of course, Na'Vi could choose between the third and fourth place, which were Sigma and Fnatic, respectively. So, we're going into game one. Uh, Na'Vi were first in the lobby with five people, so they got to choose pick or side, and they chose second pick. And the Sigma chose the Radiant side, and therefore they have... And for those just joining us, or those watching the VOD later on, Na'Vi, of course, being the first seed, they got to pick between playing Fnatic or Sigma, and despite Sigma being a higher rank as far as the standings were concerned, they chose Sigma to play against, and Sin was basically saying that, I'm going to take credit for this since I'm amazing, um, that <laughs> Na'Vi wanted to play against Sigma because they're more consistent, as opposed to Fnatic, who have off days, but also days where they completely destroy you, so a little bit a little bit of unpredictability over there. Uh, but looking at the band so far, we have Venomancer, Abaddon, and Clockwork. Of course, I'm looking at the Timbersaw. This is feeling like a one of the first few weeks of matches we had where Timbersaw and Clockwork were in every single pool. Um, but Ancient Apparition is going to be the first pick. Yeah, this, is, this is kind of a hero that I feel like AA has been getting way more popular over the last, I guess you should say, a month we're closing in on now. and. It's a hero that I think suits Sigma really well in terms of their playstyle. They put a lot of emphasis on the early game laning stages where Ancient Apparition's chilling touch is absolutely insane in certain combinations. I'm watching Weaver right now. Um, and for the kind of mid-game oriented lineups they usually play, AA is a great support hero. I'm definitely expecting it to be a support. We've seen it as core very rarely. It used to be pretty common in the early days of Dota 2. Uh, when especially Navi would pretty much run it every game on Dendi at the International 1, but it's been falling off since then, and we haven't seen so much solo AA since then. As for Navi, they take a totally different approach. They get both Puck and Beast, and this is a very unusual combination because both of these heroes are mostly run in the mid lane. Yeah, what do you think about the Beastmaster pick? I mean, I can. It's not. The pick itself doesn't surprise me. It's the position of the pick, second overall, with, with all these other heroes in the pool. Such as the timber side, which I know Navi or Funic in particular loves to loves to play. Do they pick that to prevent something? Like I was looking for a life stealer, but he's not in the pool. That would make perfect sense for me because the roar just destroys a hero like that. Um, what's your take on the Beastmaster? I mean, the when aura is the other heroes, thing that I, I think feel of. like. You know, I feel like just seeing the heroes, it's targeted at uh, Fata. It's two of his best heroes, both the Puck and the Beastmaster. He has played countless times, but. It's still weird to choose Let's to pick it then, like here. this, instead of just taking the Puck, for example, and letting Fata have the Beastmaster, because Beastmaster against Puck isn't exactly an amazing counter. The cast time on the Roar is actually pretty long, so you can easily base shift it. Um, at the same time, you can't really build a lineup where you try to counter an a player on the opposing side by picking all his heroes because then your lineup ends up not having any sort of uh, consistency anyway between the heroes but as it looks it's probably going to be an offlane beastmaster which we've seen quite a lot but it's one of those offlaners which i feel like is really Yours easy to counter so you need to be careful with what you do uh, very Radiant dependent on farming the ancients hit. with the axes and what if they get blocked and no escape mechanism um, he's decently tanky and has okay armor, but that's pretty Silence, much it. Sir. Oh boy, Chaos Knight and Silence are finishing it off for Sigma. Navi only have two seconds to pick, and they are going to go to Timbersaw, who surprisingly what? is last. So it's not going to be an offlane okay. Beastmaster, at least. Now this is just really weird. So. <laughs> hey, it's Captain's Draft. What do you expect, Cinder? Come on, oh, come on, buddy. The thing is, when you looked at the pool in the beginning and the way Navi. They, how do I put this? The approach they took to their draft, basically, was we get cores early on, and there were lots of good supports. There were AA, Rubik, Silencer, Jaker. Uh, I guess we shouldn't count Warlock, so probably those four, maybe even an Alchemist, after their nerf, can definitely still be used as a support. Uh, but Navi just didn't really go for it, and exactly like I was going to say after we saw the Timbersaw picked up, it's probably going to be Puppy jungling the Beastmaster. That's really old that's school. Insane. I hope that's what happens. Uh, if you know what you're doing, he's actually a decently fast jungler, because what you can do, the Axes have a really long cast range, and 
be. So you can imagine that you can farm two camps with the same axes. So you stack two camps, or stack one camp, and go to the other one. You throw the axes into that camp from the other one, and then you hit the axes on all the creeps. And if you're allowed to do that, you can actually farm up decently fast. It's not by any means an Enigma or Chen or Enchantress speed, but I think you can get a level 6 at about 6 minutes if you are not disrupted at all. No, well, that's the question. Is Sigma gonna interrupt him? I mean, the, the, do they... I guess, considering the lineup that Navi has picked and the puppy is playing the Beastmaster, it should be pretty obvious that he's gonna attempt to jungle. And I feel like the recovery time on a Beastmaster is not very good. And if you take him out of that jungle, what can he do? You know, he can stack Ancients, I suppose, but he's not exactly a good ganker. <laughs> Maybe if he gets his boar at some point, but not really at that point. I don't know. It's very risky. A very risky pick for, for Navi. I think this can easily, you know, it's one of those games where just looking at the drafts, I feel like Navi are more restricted in the sense that if they have a bad early game, they don't have much to fall back on. Apart from, of course, I guess you could say their mid game potential is kind of sick with both Queen of Pain, Puck, and all of that, but at the same time, they don't have any real late game. And that means if they lose the early game, they have like this short timing window in the mid game where they might be square, and then if they don't win then, and Sigma could just farm, I feel. If they get into a late game scenario where they have a really strong Chaos Knight and Prophet, I don't know if Navi's heroes can actually deal with it unless if we get uh, like a really incredibly farmed Queen of Pain on Havost, which is interesting as well. I feel like we should go over the heroes because this is really one of the least obvious games we've had in terms of hero distribution, I think. So for Navi, we've got Havost on the Queen of Pain, which was classically played by Dendi. Uh, but he will, of course, be playing his Puck. We've got Kuroki on the Earthshaker. Funic will be playing as Timbersaw, and finally Puppy on Beastmaster. And just really quickly, uh, I got a little bit of feedback from the chat that I'm a little lower than usual. I've tried to adjust a little bit. I hope it's good by now, and that, yeah, I'm allowed it to you. Interesting. No, it's nuts. Everything's <laughs> fine for me. I don't know. <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. Peculiar. Anyway, on the other side of the coin, oh, look at these cuddly treants. We have Paris playing the Chaos Knight, Fata on the Silencer. <laughs> as we might have an engagement here right off the bat, which I wonder who this really benefits. There's no major lockdown other than the Earthshaker stuff. Killing Touch is sick in 5 on 5, trust me. That's true. But as far as lockdown, Kuroki can bad, technically block somebody off, but it's not looking like that's going to be the case here. They don't have any vision right here. Kuroki getting ready, but we'll think twice. Pasta's going to be playing the Rubik. Who is 10? <sighs> sick of these names, I'm serious. So sick of these names. <laughs> oh, he actually it's is going to block. Oh, is he actually blocked in Rubik? He is stuck in place. He's going to Telekinesis Funic out of the way. Axe is going to hit two. Ancient Apparition stuck too. Are they going to get two kills right off the bat? This is insane. If so, Chilling Touch goes off. You're seeing the extra damage. Funic actually might be in a lot of trouble. He's going to get first blooded. Ancient Apparition is going to fall. There's a one for one trade right off the bat. Havos getting extremely low. Poss as well. Last click. Going to Miggle. Are you kidding me? Two. So two for one, Sigma's favor, but first blood going the way of Navi. Oh wait, was the other way around? No, I think Sigma even got the first blood, uh, didn't they? No, 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 Navi got first blooded, oh. I believe. Yeah, Navi got first blooded, yes. So yeah, Sigma got yeah. two kills and the first blood out of that. That fissure from Kuroki was so <laughs> sick. That's one of the best fissures I've seen. <laughs> but they just didn't have the follow-up. The axes from Puppy were great, but not enough damage to follow through. And even though Havos does get that one kill, we just saw Chilling Touch right there. That fight was just all Chilling Touch. How many ranged heroes do they have? They had yeah. four ranged heroes, I think, with Chilling Touch on them. You just die. It's... It's that crazy of a level 1 skill. So, off to a good start. Our Sigma. That one on one or level 1 engage, rather. But... Oh, More Telekinesis top oh, on yeah. Puppy. Here we have another Fissure coming out very shortly. Puppy's getting extremely low. Looks like he's gonna go down. Paris and Postle are in a lot of trouble because the Fissure completely blocking them up. As Timbersaw is doing a lot of damage to Paris, he's gonna health pot up. But looks like Kuroki and Posse are going to be in a 1v1 fight, but that's not really 1v1 because Ancient Apparition is there to help out. Kuroki will fall one way or another. Chaos Knight trying to get out, but Funic just doesn't have any maneuverability without that Timber Chain. And Chaos Knight, <laughs> what was that? Trying to take out the Illusions, I suppose, but again, going Sigma's favor, 4-1. to one. I... <laughs> You know, I've seen weird games in my time, but... This lane. In my time! The Navi, okay, listen. Navi are running a, a triple melee strength lane. 
This is legit. It's so okay. weird what they're doing. And that almost worked out. But Sigma, again, they draw the longest draw here. They got two kills for nothing. They got the Beastmaster as well as the Shaker, of course, and did stay alive there. Really close to getting the Chaos Knight because, of course, Timbersaw is insane against these strength heroes, of course, with the Whirling Death. But... I, I think Puff is doing the right thing. It's like, okay, this top lane didn't work out. I need to do something else. But if he's not jungling, he's just going to be a horribly underleveled Beastmaster. And that's kind of a terrible hero to have low levels on. Axe is actually going to take Fata by surprise here in the mid lane. Oh, he got cocky. He got real cocky. You don't expect here. you don't expect a Beastmaster to be ganking at level two. <laughs> Beastmaster suddenly in that mid lane. So really uh, intelligent here from Puffy. And it's going to get him his level three. So very well done. Yeah, sorry, I want to give a shout-out to everybody that's bought a ticket. We are almost doubling, almost at the threshold of which we are. We will double our prize pool at 40k. And it's very exciting. I expect that to be done by the end of today, hopefully. So if you guys haven't bought a ticket yet and you want to support the cause, a lot of the sponsors here, like I talked about in the video, which is in our YouTube channel, uh, have not supported or have not taken part in Dota 2 tournaments before, so this is the first time for them, so hopefully uh, we give off a good impression, which I'm not sure is the case with my commentating, which is very, very all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> they actually wrote me a PM, they were like, your casting is good, but you need a new camera. <laughs> How dare you, as the rate, as, as, perfect timing, Cinder, I missed the courier kill. <laughs> Are you serious? Did they, wait, was that the boar? What? Puppy's boar killed the courier, or where, where did die? I have no idea. Okay, I, need to I don't. Find that I courier. have to admit, I haven't. I haven't found the key to find courier. Me neither. Almost. I saw a Reddit post about that, and uh, yeah. I feel ashamed that I didn't follow through. <laughs> I, I saw the same post. Okay, so it's not just. And me, then that's I'm good. like, yeah, but I'm not controlling the camp. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you! It's all on me all the time. But either way, Sigma's courier is down. That is pretty crippling. But you're right. This triple melee. Well, I guess it's a double melee now, but either way, it's all melee in this top lane. Very odd. I mean, really, it's all about survivability with Timbersaw, and I guess Kuroki just needs to get levels at the end of the day. So, what do you think? We've got a little bit of a weird lane here in the mid lane, because Silencer is very rarely played as a solo. He's actually pretty strong, because the Glaives of Wisdom is an orb attack, so it doesn't trigger creep aggro. So the way you can harass your opponent in lane, it's very, very easy. Um, but... He's still not played that much in mid. He's he doesn't have any lockdown, no slow, no stun. Um, pretty fragile against ganks. So, do you think this idea from Sigma to put him mid and play him with double null talisman? Shout out to Arteezy. Is that you know, <laughs> is that the right decision in this game for Sigma? Because they could have put another hero there, perhaps. Well, considering Earthshaker's not really ganking yet, uh, he's not in too much trouble to be honest. And that's a hero that if you get a ton of levels on in the early game, he can snowball out of control thanks to the. The silence thingamabobber where you gain silence, or I'm just not the silence, the intelligence gain over time, which is, I believe they changed that so you don't have to level your glaives for that, even though they are leveled at this point, so that point is completely moot, but either way, you might be getting ganked here <laughs> to the level 3 Beastmaster, who has two boars, they're gonna get one slow, Dendi X might go and he's gonna use his ultimate, there's the ultimate from Fata, and two TPs to follow, are they gonna be able to get any... Reverse kill here on Dendi, he doesn't have any escape ability other than his loser orb, which is enough to get away just barely. Good lord, that was actually really fast reaction time, but at the end of the day, they saved Silencer, but that's four people in mid lane now. Yeah, in, in my book, that's a big win for Navi. Sure, they used the Dream Coil, but that's a shorter cooldown than Global Silence. They forced double rotation from Sigma, including the Prophet, who completely left his lane. And of course, that's a different story than when a support leaves a lane. Because when Miggle is gone for, how much was that? Like 40 seconds in total, I guess, before he came back to the bottom lane, or at least 30? That's Havost getting significant advantage down here. He's he's already almost a full level ahead of Miggle on his Queen of Pain, so it's kind of a big deal for Miggle to have to TP away for that. And um, yeah, I mean, it also opens up the top lane, of course. Funic is closing in on level 6. He will have Arcane Boots as well. And this really weird laning for Na'Vi, it's actually working out, so they had a pretty terrible start, but now they're leading on gold and experience at this point, just finding way more on the map than Sigmar. Do you think he would have died mid with that global silence usage? If perhaps with one TP support would have been enough, two is a little bit overkill, and of course somebody was already on his way over there to begin with. So it was well, just so a huge investment. Two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you gotta 
do you gotta base all your movements off of instinct and actually the boss. Oh. See if he gets his. Oh my god, did he actually dodge that? He did dodge the chaos wow, he bolt. It. That was like 200 range <laughs> passed as well. <laughs> That's Holy insane. Is under we need is an instant replay of that, Sindrin. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't have any production quality on this stream. Unfortunately, so it's not we don't happen. have a good game. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, the guy they needed to TP mid for that kill was Chaos Knight. And you can't really blame Sokshka for not TPing in there because obviously he has to get his farm here in this lane. And it's not really that characteristic for a Chaos Knight to TP that early defensively for his teammates. But he is the hero that can lock down the puck during the global. He has the longest stun, the highest damage output on their team at this point. And Prophet can obviously still assist from the bottom lane with his ult, which he, at that point, unfortunately, didn't have yet. He was level 5. Uh, else Dendi would have definitely died. Which, Dendi's taking some harassment here. And this mid lane, it was looking pretty good for Fata, but now he's 10 CS behind, and Dendi's almost got a, an 8-minute blink dagger. <laughs> let's, uh, let's not deny how crazy that actually is. Chaos Knight was actually thinking about ganking, so it does go out after... Despite you telling him not to go out of lane, Cinderin, he is he's ganking with Chaos Knight, which of course isn't the most atypical thing in this tournament. <laughs> We've seen a lot of <laughs> random heroes gank for it. I shouldn't say for absolutely no reason. It's just the playstyles completely change. It's just a more aggressive nature, I feel like. I mean, despite having a uh, very small hero pool to choose from, people end up or teams end up going just way more aggressive than. Uh, than normally, and that's saying something considering the, the current meta, as we see Blink Dagger on Puck, as you were talking about. The current meta is aggressive to begin with, so it's just adding insult to injury for teams that can't handle it. Yeah, it's it's also because you need to think about when the captains go into the game and they need to analyze the pool, one of the easier things to immediately identify is what type of lockdown are there. Are there good stuns? Are there good slows? Are there crucial silences? So it's something you can very quickly see when you analyze the hero pool and, and construct a lineup around and since you have very short time in total you're gonna have to make a decision very quickly and stuns will often be the number one indicator if you're under pressure and just need to pick quickly or like okay we need some lockdown that's kind of the go-to and we've seen that in many of our games not all of them though we've had push lineups we've had global strategies as well when the pools were right for it but generally stuns and slows are very important and pretty easy to get your hands on off bottom lane almost reality rift yeah not quite kuroki's here though and but there's a ton of creeps i'm not sure what they're gonna be able to do with maybe a fissure well. paris oh, again. He, is another nice disjoint by Chavos just playing out of his mind right now with that queen of fate but this tower is in all likelihood a goner he Tree ants are just too scary. The fungal tree ants, man. The boss is gonna try to get a. a no Did he do it again? <laughs> are you serious? This is becoming second nature. His boss is getting extremely low. He's gonna end up going down to the right clicks, but the global silence comes out. Chaos Knight Dandy. Oh, he phase shifts out. He's just waiting. Rift, and it looks like Sashka and the rest of Sigma is on the back foot as Paris is getting completely blocked up by this fissure. So Kuroki, the rest of Navi are playing out of their minds as far as coordination is concerned. Vada will get a kill. But is he gonna be able to get away here? Nature's Prophet's gonna TPM for a little bit of support. Kill. But there's the Sonic Wave gonna finish him off. Funny getting extremely low. He doesn't have enough. Oh! oh his self keeps him alive, triple and Nature's kill. Prophet will go down to Chavos as he gets a triple kill. Oh man, this is My insane. My goodness, that fight was so <laughs> sick from Navi. Okay, Even I have to say, Chavos, good lord, man. Good lord. I feel Radiant like, you know, if I was Sakshke by now, attack. I would just give up doing that. He already disjointed two in a row. And he's basically baiting you. He's like, come on, come on, you can stun me this time. I know I dodged the last two, but this time I won't be ready. And he's still ready. So when that Chaos Bolt goes out the window, it definitely helps Navi a lot with their initiation because they don't have to worry about that big stun coming out from Sokshka. But the global silence from, from Fata, I think, was completely perfect there. They just didn't have enough follow through because Chaos Knight wasn't available to Dream Coil. A little bit of a weird setup. They have any follow up though. Kuroki oh, wow, he's getting through. a little bit close. Dandy's going to initiate. The boss dealing some more damage. That is. Two kills. Oh, Maxi Pops might actually get away here. Dandy's gonna get cold feet. That's a one for one at the end of the day. So a good recovery from Sigma overall. And this tower is gonna be good to go, at least for now, as Sashka's gonna come in for some support. Level eight at the moment on the Chaos Knight. And Puppy getting some level stop. So he's happy <laughs> that there's some space created for him at least. Yeah, when you think about it, the way Navi have been organizing their fights over the last time, they haven't even had Primal Roar. Um, so 
it's just going to get scarier from here on for, for Sigma. They they have some great potential with their lineup, I feel. They have so much good global presence with the Prophet, the AA ult, the Global Silence, and the Chaos Knight, who's generally a really good mobile initiator who can initiate on kind of any lane, but not on the Queen of Pain, and probably also not on the Puck. So that's perhaps one of the things about this game that makes it really hard for Sokshka is that he's kind of limited in what targets he can go on. Puck can face shift, the Queen of Pain can blink, the Shaker's always out of vision, and the Timber Saw, if you start reality rifting him, he can still get away with the Timber Chain, so it's actually a really hard game for Chaos Knight if Rubik doesn't set him up or the Global Silence does. Smokes now on Beastmaster, so expect some pushes or some eggs to occur as the top tower was denied by Sigma, so nicely done. Um, only one tower dead at this point, despite the ridiculous amount of aggression that we've seen. Six to eight in favor of Navi, only 12 minutes into the game. Dandy, of course, uh, I guess he finishes a null tower. Is he going Dagon? Yep. Okay, so I guess that shouldn't come as too Probably. big of a surprise, considering he's done it every other game, or pretty much. He could technically go for a Veil, but I think, you know, it's really good for his team, but it's not an item we see that commonly on the puck. But since he's with a Queen of Pain, a Shaker, and a Timbersaw, I actually don't think it would be that bad. Of course, Timbersaw, his damage is mainly pure, so it doesn't really benefit from the Veil, but Whirling Death is magical if it doesn't hit a tree. Um, but yeah, among all the other heroes, the, the Veil is pretty good. Oh, yeah, Goodbye! Nice knowing you, AA ult. It's gonna hit one. Dendi trying to go up front, but won't find anybody. So, would you say the Veil of... I mean, obviously it's an odd choice on the puck, but as far as the team is concerned, it makes sense. I mean, Kuroki is not gonna... Actually, pretty decent farm, considering he hasn't really been sitting in the lane, so he's gonna... It's only a thousand away from the Blink Dagger sometimes. He can go for that by Buffy and get his done. Cold feet, and oh, nice silence to prevent the stun coming out from Kurok, but it would have been a death either way. Chavos can't blink away, you can't dodge a stun now, bitch! Two for nothing exchange. Sigma's in the favor here, Dendi. Using his ultimate to keep everybody at bay, and we'll get out just in time. You need the global silence another... to, to not dodge <laughs> the chaos bolt, basically. That's what we've learned here. <laughs> yeah, another great global. Perfect timing again. And this is what Navi really need to be careful of. It's it's kind of the one ability right now that counters them more than anything. But, oh, here we go. Easy double kill here. Killing spree! Too go easy. To two different heroes, though, but follow what? through. Sashka. You're going balls deep, good sir. Of course, Dendi's ult is down, so he's not to worry too much. And, well, there's an invis room. He's good to go, I guess. He saw it coming. He knew it. He knew it was coming. And actually, Kuroki's gonna get a double fissure. Puppy looking to initiate. He has his ultimate three seconds. There's a waning rift. They're just gonna completely blow up nature's profit. And Sashka, I'm pretty sure you don't want to go in here, buddy. Pretty sure. He can't really follow through, so... It's looking good for Navi right now, but it, as we talked about before the game really started, it also is the time in terms of their lineup. They really need to make something happen right here. Not necessarily in the sense that they don't have any late game, but if nothing happens, they're probably going to get out farmed and will struggle later on against the amount of, of late game potential and global presence that, that Sigma have with their lineup. But Navi are really making it count now, and that's why I think either both Dagon and Vale are actually good choices because both of them really play in with the, the kind of peak they're looking for in, in timing with their strategy. Um, I would personally Close love to see lane. the Vale. But, Last yep. word. He'll be fine. Might see um, turnaround. Dendi's in position here for a coil. Double coil. Sashka and Fat is gonna get silence before he can get that stun. Poor Sashka, man. He cannot get a Chaos Bolt off to save his life. Bohosko is gonna go down. AA ult is gonna completely miss because Puck, played by Dendi, is just ripping through the kids left and right. Fata. Still has the Shadow Strike applied to him. He's gonna go down to the loser. Or I heard a roar. I heard a roar. Where is it? AA getting caught out. Dendi getting the double kill overall. I believe the roar was used. On, nope. on the they ancient apparition. Him, no. Wow, blood oh, stuff. He's got it. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> with all due, well, he was he was safe laning, right? But it was yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I'm not used to that saying that. Classic safe lane. It was a timber shaker lane. If you guys want to get an early bloodstone on Timbersaw, make sure to have two melee heroes that aren't. Uh, well, I guess Earth Shaker's okay, but two melee supports close by because triple melee wins overall. Yeah, especially if one of them is, is supporting Beastmaster. That's, you know. Beastmaster has so much lockdown at level 1, so he's the best choice overall for sure. Man, I think at level 3, he gets a slow <laughs> if you skill for it. <laughs> yeah. 
awesome. Yeah. So he has level four in Call of the Wild, two in axes, and one in his aura. This has been the go-to build lately. Um, uh, would you agree with that? Actually, am I wrong? I believe that is a normal build these days. I don't know Just if there's one in much the of a go-to build for Beastmaster because I don't feel like we see the hero that much. And to me, it's kind of a mystery. I always consider this hero really damn good because the Hawk is kind of uncontested, one of the best map control abilities in the game. It's... You know, you can get counter warded, you can lose map control. The Hawk can always give you something. If you're leading, you can lock down the enemy. If you're behind, you can get some sort of grip on where the enemy is on the map. But And then on top of that, you have a sick disable and great pushing potential with the aura and the axis. So I think it's a great hero and just being underplayed. And Right now, it's it's been doing a good job in this game so far. I wouldn't say it's been the MVP by any stretch, but definitely had an impact here. And I think now that we get into the mid game, and it's going to be so much about the map control, I think the Hawk is going to be absolutely amazing in this game. Dendi also just picked up a day gun, by the way, so... They have so great kill potential right here, and... Might even see Navi pick up a couple of boots of travel, of course, to uh, do the. Well, that's what I was gonna think. Uh, that, I think that's what Dandy's gonna end up doing. I'm kind of surprised, considering Chavos is. Well, would you agree with this? He's pretty greedy. A pretty greedy player, uh, playing the co-op right now. He went treads, which isn't. Uh, it's, it's not unorthodox by any means, but considering you have a Beastmaster on the team, I was kind of expecting him to go boots of travel, but I think Dandy's gonna be the one to do that. As AA blast is gonna hit three in the face. Would you? Uh, is that what you would go as you are one of the best pro players that this game has ever seen, obviously? Yes. I hate you. What's I hate you so much. <laughs> would you go that on your feeder and Lena? Oh, as we have a smoker, you have to answer that question a little bit later. Cinder and Sigma smoking up, and Dendi and the rest of Navi know what's going on, apparently. All right, so now that up. picture I posted on Twitter is not only going on Twitter, man. <laughs> Where's it going? I love that picture. I, don't know. I have no problem. I, mean, I have no yeah, shame. That's the problem. Yeah, I have that's, absolutely no shame. It's actually about hard it. to get back on. Oh, there we go. Oh, this oh, is oh. going to get stunned. He has BKB, but it's not going to be popping because he's going to get completely blown up. Nice fissure. Navi in a 5v4 situation. You've seen a mech which is picked up on both teams now, so kind of counter uh, act each other overall. As this tower looks like it's going to go down one way or another. Are they going to be able to deny it? It's a question. Kuroki putting himself in a terrible position. Three seconds stun. That's his death. Along with the tower going the way of Sigma International. The question is where Sigma goes from here. They've got 20 seconds. They could try to push the tower in mid and maybe even get it, but they need to be really careful not to overextend here. They've used the AOL and most of the dead plates coming back up again, but there's the global. global silence. And then the, I couldn't tell if we were going to do that thing or not. <laughs> Bobby's going to run away. And he's going to use his war. Is he going to be able to get away? That's a huge ult being used. Cold Feet is going to end up getting the kill, it looks like. Nope, he's going to live to see another day. Sashka, Sonic going. I can't even keep up with these freaking names, man. Who is Sashka these days? Sonic Wave is going to be used on Fat. He's going to use the mechanism as a result. But will not live because Kuroki is there with his beautiful, beautiful Earth Shaker. Miggle trying to TP out, but Dagon, goodbye. As treads are going to be picked up by Dendi, so not going boots to travel. Yeah, you just kind of had that feeling there with these with these about 10 second respawn timers on Na'Vi that when Sigma s start diving the tier 2 tower there, the amount of time they need to invest on killing the Beastmaster and or the Timbersaw there will be enough for Havos to come out again as well as Kuro. And they should have, they must have known because they killed Havos before he got anything on. So when he respawns, he has a 10 second BKB, he has a level 2 Sonic Wave and all the setup for his team. You can't tower dive against this kind of lineup at 20 minutes without BKBs because you just flat out get get bursted to, to say it like we like to say, you know. There's there's just nothing to do. And while Sigma just got a really good fight, actually, they got two kills for absolutely nothing and a tier one. They kind of overstayed their welcome, and now they paid the Roshan that they might have been able to contest if they didn't. Right, and I th that's kind of a pattern we've been seeing. Uh, in this tournament specifically with Sigma, they, they overextend after gaining a small advantage. They just get a little bit overconfident. Uh, Blink Dagger on Timbersaw, so going to be extra mobile on this on this Timbersaw. Is, he's is so funny. big. He seriously. is. So who's going boots to travel? Somebody's got to go it. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Jesus. Timber will, uh, because he would probably get it anyway. He's not the greatest combo with Beastmaster, but he's also not the worst. I mean, when you think about it, you have the Roar Lockdown. Uh, if Beastmaster is together with his Hawk, and then Timber can do massive damage during the duration of the roar. Um, but he doesn't have any secondary lockdown, so unless if those two combined can get the burst during the roar, the target's probably gonna escape. But then again, looking over Sigma's lineup, uh, 
No one's gonna survive that at this moment. They're all gonna be killed off by it. Hey, oh. Gotta steal a couple of creeps, I think. He didn't even yeah, have vision there. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Navi pinging out. There must be a ward here, but just mind games here by, by Mad on the Ancient Apparition. Timbersaw. Sasha getting caught out, but Monix is gonna get the last word to his face. There's the Global Silence, pretty expensive. And he's just gonna use it to TP out, and will do so. That's a Good big decision. ultimate. Lavosto might find Sashka. There's a two second stun puck. There's initiation blink. Does he have to use his ultimate? He's gonna do it. Lavosto has Sonic Wave if he wants to. But, okay, that's another huge ultimate. I mean, people don't realize the cooldown on yeah. this on Phantasm is 140 seconds. It's just another a big, big waste. Ultimate. And I think the play from Fata there, he, he global silences, he realizes there's no way in hell, and he TPs out. That was a good decision. I think Chaos Knight should have done the same. Uh, when the global was on, they could have just both agreed, let's get the hell out of here and escape, but I think Sokshka thought he was so far down the lane that he would get out, but these kind of heroes on Na'Vi can really chase. You have Timbersaw and Pox, and Pox might actually go for Pox here. Big damage! Mega kill! Will be an Oh my god, just on the edge. I, I had a brain fart, I apologize. But anyway, Kuroki. Die gonna get last word, gonna run away. Should be good to go. I was actually thinking, <laughs> I've been calling effing mad Sashka as well as Sashka Sash. So apparently, there are two Sashkas on this team, <laughs> which is, uh, it's better than one. How many I mads? Suppose. Yeah, zero mads. So, zero mads? Yeah. Wow. I've been calling oh, mads. Yep, Dendi. it's actually gonna be zero mads. Two right seconds now. on the dagger. Oh, no is dagger. he gonna continue? No. He's gonna back up. I might be in trouble. Actually. Might hit. It is not gonna hit. Just right out of range. Effing mad. Greatly done, good sir. Dendi, lose your orb. Aw, oh, man. He, not even Dendi would go for that one. I think not if he had Dendi. hit it, maybe. If he had Blink Dagger ready, he would have gone. Yeah, if he had Blink Dagger ready and the lose your orb actually hit, I think he would have gone for it. But Definitely. Dagon is level 2 at this point. I I mean, I'd be shocked if he doesn't go for 5 at this point. I mean, um, if you go for 1, you go for 5 these days. That's just, that's just how it is. Yeah, it's... It's one thing, it's something that was really underestimated for a long time, I think, was how much it matters that the cooldown gets reduced. The, the plus damage, of course, is, is a big part of it, but when you go from a cooldown of 35 seconds to one of 15, it really matters, because in late game, many of these fights really do stretch over more than 20 seconds, so two data messages, then suddenly you don't only have the double damage that you get from upgrading it four times, but essentially you have quad damage since you get to use it twice. And um, that's really, it took a long time for the pro team to realize how good a high level Dagon really is. It, it was, it was buffed quite a few times, it was like this for a long time before anyone really started using it. Kuroki has enough for a blink dagger. 20, eh, more than enough. As he buys it, as we, as I talk about it, chilling touch along with the smoke, I think we'll be able to initiate on poor old puppy. They know he's there. There goes the reality rip did, into the chaos bolt, into the AA ult, which completely misses. But the kill occurs nonetheless, and uh, as a result, Dendi's just gonna say, "Hey, Dagon three, brah." As a result, yes, how did as that a result, result? It was because of and that then kill. Gold. Th this is how Navi works, okay? They get a kill, uh, they get yeah, killed, they get another one, they buy Dagon. Or did they get two oh, here? Oh, this is gonna be a good Sonic wave. It's gonna hit two. Paris extremely low. That is too dead for so for. <laughs> God, I can't even think right now. It's effing mad. Yes. I should just, they should just change your name at this point, boss. Oh, he's gonna get out in time. No, they're just gonna call it GG. So, a pretty quick game for Navi. And uh, despite having... Okay, first of all, I don't think we saw one Echo Slam. I just realized that until now. That, that, just, that just hit me now. But despite the lane being extremely weird for Navi, uh, they snowballed. And that's exactly what they needed to do. Yeah, to me, the lanes from Sigma and the start they got were actually on a pretty good 